If you die in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> hey, curious kids, Kevin here. Today on A Place Called Space, I'm answering the question, can you hear sounds in space? First, we have to talk about what sound is, how it travels, and how we hear it. Sound is vibrations. It's things moving back and forth really quickly. It's the movement of atoms and molecules, actually. Now, atoms are the things that everything is made up of. Me, you, it's matter. And these vibrations can move through solids, liquids, and gases in the form of a wave. The molecules kind of bump into each other and pass along their motion until it reaches your ear. So to hear, your eardrum vibrates, then these tiny bones in your middle ear translate those vibrations into energy. And that energy is something your brain can interpret as sound. That's how we hear. The really important thing that I said was that the vibrations, or the sound, travels through a medium, solids, liquids, or gases. All right, we know the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers a second, or 186,000 miles a second. But what about sound? How fast does it go? Well, in air, it moves at about 1,200 kilometers an hour, or 760 miles per hour. And in water, it's four times faster. And that's because there are more molecules. It's denser, so the molecules can pass it more quickly. Now this brings us to space. We know sound vibrations need a medium to travel through. The solid, the liquid, or the gas, like air or water. And space doesn't have that. Space is a vacuum, so there's no air. But space does have some atoms. It's called the interstellar medium. So can they vibrate and travel the sound? Well, we have to talk about the amount of atoms. NASA says there is about one atom per cubic centimeter in space, which can mean there's anywhere between 0.003 to 100,000 molecules in that cubic centimeter. Maybe they can move the sound? No, not really, because there's not enough molecules compared to air, which is 2.6 times 10 to the 19th molecules in a cubic centimeter. That's at least 260 trillion times more molecules in air than space. So it's just not enough molecules in space for us to hear sound. So supernova or exploding stars are actually really, really quiet. Now, how do we get around this? Because we have to talk in space. Well, we build pockets of air out there. There's air in spacesuits, space stations, and spaceships. So you can talk and be heard normally in any of those. Two astronauts, though, cannot talk to each other outside in spacesuits unless they have a radio because they're not in the same pocket of air. Now, is Earth the only place that we can hear sounds? No, it's not. So where, where else? Well, any place with an atmosphere or like a body of water, maybe an underground ocean, can transfer that sound. For example, let's look at Venus. Venus's atmosphere is much thicker than ours. So sound travels faster there, just like underwater, because there are more molecules. All right, lastly, I do have to tell you a little secret about movies and TV shows. Since there is no sound in space, that unfortunately means we couldn't hear the cool things like spaceships zooming by, laser guns being fired, or space stations blowing up. So the movie makers add some sound because otherwise, it'd be pretty boring. Here goes nothing. Now, on to trivia. The answer to last week's question of how many countries have had astronauts is C-19. This week's question is, what is the name of the first spacecraft to carry a golden record into space? Is it A, Pioneer 10, B, Pioneer 11, C, Voyager 1, or D, Voyager 2? Tune in next week to get your answer. Always be curious.